I had a curious thing happen to me this morning as I got up early and was looking at the lessons that were pointed to for today. I read the Acts lesson, and of course, there's huge conflict. The centurion who has charge over Paul is trying to get some sort of bead on what's really going on. He appears, Paul appears before the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and Paul knows in some ways that his life could be in danger at that point, and he very cleverly raises the theological question that actually pits Pharisees and Sadducees against each other. So guess what? The attention's not on him anymore. And they're fighting it out between themselves, and eventually he's led away. But then something curious happens. It's a transition in the text, but it was the thing that just jumped out at me. That after he had been taken back, knowing that if that he had not been removed, quote unquote, fearing that they would take pull him to pieces, um, he's back in his jail cell that night. And the Lord appears before him and says these words, the last line in the reading Sarah read. Keep up your courage, for just as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must bear witness also in Rome. And that was one of those moments, has this ever happened to you, where the word leapt off the page? And I felt like something was being said to me not just reading the account in the text. And I started thinking about it. Jerusalem, Rome. That's sort of like saying, you've been real, real faithful in Charlotte, North Carolina, and now I'm going to send you to New York City. In other words, there's a huge and much larger venue to which God in that moment was calling Paul. And Paul had already demonstrated an extraordinary level of both security in Christ and courage out of that inner security. I mean, he's the guy from whom we get, you know, not by my righteousness, but Christ's sin to be securely wrapped in his hands. And all of the other lessons that we read in terms of both Jesus' prayer for his disciples and that, that his love would be in them, as well as the psalm lesson about being in a deep place of security, reflect, in essence, who we are, that we are kept, that we are bound in Him. <coughs> you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Classic line, always, almost always offered at funeral services, because that's where we are being taken. That's where we belong. That's, in fact, our true home. And if we believe that we are secure in Jesus and that we have in Him a true home that actually transcends time and space and that that's actually true now, it's not just a destination, it's actually a kind of spiritual reality in which we now live. That's what John means when he talks about having eternal life. It's not just the sense of a destination to which we're going. It has to do with the present reality that God is born in us that will carry us into the place where what we have been given now becomes fully manifested all around us in that place where there is no pain and there is no grief. So out of all of this huge circle of, in essence, security that the scripture affirms, here's God nudging Paul to leave Charlotte and go to Manhattan. I'm sending you to Rome, just as you testified in Jerusalem. So now, as in, in the same way, go testify in Rome. And what I really heard in my own heart as I was pondering all of that was in essence a, a, a call to step up, to be more public, to be bolder. And then I read a great story online that just affirmed that. It was a Twitter article that, it, that was posted from the Washington Times that Greg Thornberry wrote, who's the president of the King's College. And he tells the story of Duke Ellington. In 1956, Duke Ellington's career was doing just like this. His jazz was considered old hat. The new fans in town were Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. And at that point, Duke Ellington was really considered a has-been. Until 
the Newport Jazz Festival of that year, where he just blew everybody out of the water. Out of that, that gave him the resources that he needed to do something that he had never done before. He wrote and composed a piece called Sacred Concert. It was premiered at Grace Episcopal Cathedral in San Francisco, and later, a number of years later, also presented at Fifth Avenue Presbyterian New York, where it was actually recorded on RCA. What I love about that whole story was Duke Ellington's story about that. He said, in that change, what happened is that he felt the freedom. I want to make sure I get this quote right, because I loved it. He said, he said, I now can say openly in this piece what I have been saying on my knees that the deep Christian faith that was his, that sacred concert became the thing that he wanted to, in fact, give the world. He said, this is actually the most important thing I've ever done. In many ways, <laughs> he went from Newport Jazz Festival, his Charlotte, to Manhattan, literally, at Fifth Avenue Presbyterian, and openly being clear to the entire public about his faith as a Christian. So I have to ask, is God nudging you to be more bold? To not take the security that we have in Jesus as a given that allows me to live at peace within my own life, but rather seeing that security as fuel that impels us into new places of boldness as to who we say to the world we are? as believers in Jesus Christ. That's what Rome is, you know. It was the pagan political centerpiece of the entire Mediterranean. He was going out there. And I can't help but think that if there's any purpose in Pentecost at all, it's to take us from in here to out there. Amen. Amen.